Welcome everyone to SmackDown Live review of March 7, 2017 on Tuesday nights. I am Boy One Three Jim. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell button, and also follow me on Twitter. Links in the description box below at Boy One Two Three Jim. Now, with that out of the way, um, this is my second take, guys. I I finished my first review. But then I realized, eh, let me talk a little bit more. So, the main event was sick. Um, like, not it wasn't, like, the best. But, like, it was... I'm talking about the last moment of the match. AJ Styles was going to go for a phenomenal form. Randy Orton was getting ready for it, right? Because he was in position. I thought he was going to catch for the RKO. So, AJ Styles jumped on the top rope. Landed perfectly and safely on the apron. No damage, no mess up, nothing. He landed on the apron like he never even jumped or anything. Like it was that nasty, and it proved that how phenomenal he is. But Randy Orton coming back, like Styles tried to go for the 450. Orton got out the way. Catapult RKO. That was that was that was the best uh, moment in that match to me. But like everything else, the match was great. You no, know, uh, AJ Styles was working on the leg of Orton, and yeah. It was just a great, it was a good main event, like, at, at the start, but then it turned to a great main event at the end. So, yeah, that was the main event of SmackDown, uh, AJ Styles taking on Orton, that was great. Um, but everything else, tonight's show was good. You see, I don't feel like reviewing today, I just don't, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just, just because. Um, because you guys are probably looking forward to it, and I don't want to disappoint. So, yeah. I was gonna work on uh, No Mercy Universe mode because I already have SmackDown for this Thursday done already. So I was gonna get No Mercy done for this Sunday and then move on. But yeah, I'll do that after this. So SmackDown start with Daniel Bryan and Shivik Man talking about the controversy with the WWE Championship. How you know Rainier didn't want to wrestle Bray Wyatt, but now he does. AJ Styles went through the Battle Royale and then went through Luke Harper to get his shot at the title. So now tonight, um, they made the main event during the weekend that AJ Styles will take on Randy Orton tonight, which Randy Orton won. I already went through that. So then we go from that to uh, John Cena and Nikki Bella teaming up against Ellsworth and Carmella. I did not listen to Ellsworth say, a, I did not listen to what he had to say on I muted my TV until John Cena came through. When John Cena came through, then I'm like, okay, finally, let's get into the match. And then, yeah. You know, they did their thing. Before the match started, actually. The Miz and Maurice came out. Carmella super kicked Nikki. Nikki Bella was focusing on Maurice and Miz. She turned around into a super kick by Carmella. Miz was talking uh, trash about Cena on, the, on commentary, as he always does. Talking about, you know, Super Cena talking like a robot. And then that's probably everyone's fucking promo on Monday Night Raw. Besides Samoa Joe and maybe a Sami Zayn. Uh, but everyone else, maybe uh, Triple H don't count. You know, but like on the active every week, every day roster, you know, Charlotte, a Bailey, Sasha Banks, their promos are not good in my opinion. So yeah, basically seeing Nikki Bella won. In my opinion, the best person... Besides John Cena, to do the five knuckle shuffle with John Cena is Zack Ryder from 2011. That's just my opinion. You know, Nikki Bella did it. It was kind of corny. I'm not gonna lie, but hey, I mean, they it, they it it was cute but corny at the same time. And then in the end, they both hit their finisher, the Attitude Adjuster, and Rack Attack 2.0, and the STF and their Fearless Lock on their respective uh, genders and. Match was done, able to get the win. Miz and, Mar and Maurice attacked Cena and Mar and Nikki Bella after the match. Cena went through the to the barricade. Nikki went through the post to the LED post, and then Miz was talking about how Cena's Cena's relationship with Nikki Bella is fake. It's plastic. It, it their relationship offends everyone, but it stops now. 
and missing how seen as a liar and his relationship is one of the biggest lies ever Miz spends hours at every day with his wife Maurice because he loves her out of love he does that but ask if Cena can do the same thing to Nikki Cena says uh, sorry Miz says love doesn't mean asking the other to sign a contract to be your girlfriend that that one stung for me I'm like oh <laughs> ooh, that that that's gotta hurt Saying how Cena's a liar, programmed like a robot. So, yeah. And he said that Cena finally finally found someone money hungry as him. Saying how Cena saw what The Miz was doing for the past year and realized, you know, let me take my girl and do, put it on TV. You know, Miz do it, I'm going to do it, you know. Because Miz said that, oh, they weren't allowed to talk about it on WWE TV for the longest time. And then now the sun, now we are. So, yeah. That happens. Renee Young. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, before before I get to that. Maurice picks up the mic after the Miz and, and went to Nikki Bell said, Nikki, break that, bitch. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. The Miz and Maurice. Wonderful couple just standing in the ring being like take what you said to be last week John and Nikki and shove it up your ass Basically what the Miz was saying there Renee Young interviews Randy Orton. Randy Orton basically says in the end that AJ Styles should be the should be afraid He's just one RKO away from going to WrestleMania and he should probably run Later on Kredonk is in the ring calling out Dean Ambrose after what happened last week Dean Ambrose comes through He, he drops Hawkins and calls on Corbin. Corbin's like, you don't call me out just by calling my name. I don't, I don't, I don't go to you just because my name was called. I don't do that shit. I don't do that shit. Why are you so quick? Why are you rushing this ass whooping that's coming to you, Ambrose? Ambrose is like, fine, I'll just come to you. He goes. Hawkins tried to intervene, but in the end, got caught with the dirty deeds. And then, uh, yeah, he meet Corbin backstage later on, and he got attacked with a lead pipe. By Corbin, and then Corbin took a forklift and rocked him with it. Thought somebody saw something like that was Mick Foley and The Rock on that um half uh, half time on heat. Holy shit! So yeah, that happened. Motorola was interviewed by Dasha Fuentes about you know Motorola being an, uh, in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. Dolph Ziggler comes up and mocks him. I didn't see this part. Ziggler says you have to earn your WrestleMania moment. Moto asks. That's why Ziggler doesn't have one. Mojo, uh, Ziggler tells Mojo not to hurt himself, reaching for that brass ring, and he walks off. Wow. So we had that blister, blistation, blisteration. I don't know shit in the ring. Becky, Natalia is in the ring with Mickey James and Alexa Bliss. We're talking about WrestleMania and title shots, but in the end, in the end, Daniel Bryan made up the choice that it will be Alexa Bliss doing what AJ Lee did back in 2014 at WrestleMania 30, will defend the championship against everyone on the roster. On the SmackDown Live roster, to be more specific. And then there was a tag team match later on. Alexa Bliss stole Mickey James' thunder. Mickey James about to pin Becky Lynch after what happened with Natalya. Natalya dropping Becky Lynch. Mickey was going to go for the cover, but then Bliss came in and tacked herself in and stole the pin for Mickey. And then Mickey... Had her arm raised, and then out of nowhere, that's that Mick kick, knocking down the champion, takes the belt and holds it up, hoists it above her head. Like, I'm taking this bitch. And yeah, that was SmackDown. Holy shit, I got that all under nine minutes. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, by the way, they had the nerve to call Mickey James fat in 2010. Go fuck yourself, World Wrestling Entertainment. All right, I always look at Mickey James's gut, and like ever since she came back, and I'm thinking to myself, they had the nerve, they had the nerve. But yeah, that was SmackDown. Is there anything I'm missing? I think I got to everything. Yeah, Corbin attacking Ziggler, uh, Ziggler. Corbin attacking Ambrose, Mojo and Ziggler, Cena, Nikki, Miz, Maurice, Orton, and AJ, Carmella and Ellsworth was cringe. Oh yeah, Mar not one last thing before I go. Mar Ronaldo says something hilarious during the Nikki Bella Cena Ellsworth Carmella segment. Morrow said 
that John Cena and Nikki Bella are like strawberry with chocolate, right? And then, then he says, Ellsworth and Carmella are like alcohol and social media. <laughs> I fucking died when he said that. Oh my lord, that was phenomenal. Thank you, Mar Ronaldo. You seriously made my night. But yeah, that is SmackDown Live, guys. Did it way better than the first take. If you guys can, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links are in the description box below. As I'm watching 205 Live, Austin Aries wrestling for the first time since last year. And uh, yeah, well, leave your comments down below. What do you guys think of SmackDown? I think it's good. Com like good and Raw was good yesterday, so equal for one week. But hopefully next week will be different.